Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and I just got back from a crazy death march prospecting trip. But on today's video, I wanted to use this slab saw behind me and cut up some of the specimens I brought back, see if we can find any gold or what other cool stuff we can find in our rocks. But first, I wanted to start with the first part of this video. If you guys have missed it or you want to review, I'll put it right after this clip. If you've seen it already, I'll put a timestamp right up here so you can skip ahead. I think we're about to find some really good gold here. Hey guys, I'm Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals. And on today's video, we're gonna do some extreme gold prospecting. To give you a little background, earlier this summer, I found some really, really rich gold ore called Listwinite. When I cut it with my rock saw, I looked under the microscope and there were almost bands of gold in it. So on today's video, I'm gonna hike up the creek, way up into the headwaters here, and look for the source. Unfortunately, it is pouring down rain. I am gonna get soaked today. Hopefully I'm going to find some really, really good gold and I'm going to try not to die. I'm going to try not to get eaten by a bear. I'm going to try not to fall off a cliff. I'm going to try not to drown in the creek. So let's go see if we can find some really nice gold ore and some really cool looking lisbonite. So in the past, I found some really good float down here in this creek. And float is a, a piece of rock that's broken off the bedrock, rolled down the creek or down the hill. And it's just a piece of loose rock. Gravity rolled that thing downhill so the source, the bedrock source, must be uphill somewhere. So I'm gonna follow the branches up and just keep looking for Lispanite and try and follow it all the way to the source. And now we go into the Pacific Northwest jungle. Well, I can get a little spooky in here, but it's real dark in here. It's real wet in here. It's real quiet. Let me show you that somewhere there is about level so it's 45 degrees uphill here and it's just a jungle rainforest well it's definitely getting steeper and cliffier so hopefully i don't get clipped out here because then i have to go way back down and find an alternate route up <clears throat> but it's so far, we're doing okay. I can't tell if I'm almost at the ridge or if it's just real cloudy up there. Let me turn the camera around and show you. Here's where I'm going up. We're starting to get a bunch of rock outcrops, trees, but see just past the trees there, there's no more tops. So maybe I'm getting close. I just hope I don't get cliffed out here. Well, I'm in the cliffs for sure. Right over there is just a drop off. Goes way down there. Bye. Don't fall down that. We made it. And thank goodness it started raining real hard. Because I'm not soaking wet enough. That's how it goes in the Cascades. This is where you want to watch out for bears. We're almost at the tree line. They're getting ready to hibernate. They're real hungry. And so you don't want to run into a hungry black bear out here. Or Sasquatch for that matter, I guess. Although it'd be cool if I got one on video, huh? All right, let me work my way right up through this little pass right here. And we'll get into this bowl. One of the nice things about the Cascades, you don't need to pack water. Oh, that's good. Uh, fresh mountain spring water. Imagine if you could bottle and sell that, you'd be rich. Nowhere, in my opinion, comes close to where I'm sitting right now. This is just, it's, it's, I, I can't believe there's a place on the earth that looks like this. It's just, there's waterfalls everywhere, the clouds. If the clouds would lift, we'd get to see some, some amazing peaks. There's no wind right now, so whatever sound the camera's picking up is water, whether it's the rushing water of the creek or the dripping water of the water off the trees. But it's just, it's such a cool place right here. And uh, there's no trails here. There's no people here. It's just me and the bears. <laughs> Well, enough about the scenery. This is a prospecting video after all. Listonite is iron and nickel rich, typically. 
and so it it weathers a really brown dull brown color and there's a big old patch of brown stuff right over here I want to check out right in the headwaters of the creek well a little geology lesson of the day Dan sorry I don't mean to steal your thing there but there's a cool thing right here right behind me there's a little tiny moraine from a glacier you can see it's just piles of rock this whole valley was glaciated and you notice all this rock back over behind me here doesn't have any vegetation on it so that's the younger stuff the glacier hasn't been off that stuff as long and then once you get back over here you're starting to have some trees grow some grass things like that and then up here on the side where the glacier came down the valley like this and up on the side the trees are a lot older but the glacier not too long ago maybe 100 200 years melted out of here and then things started to take over like nature does and the closer I get the better that's looking over there see how it's all brown right above the snow good looking stuff right there Well, this is kind of cool I wanted to show you. There's a big dike right here, a big intrusive dike. And what happened here is there was a fault or a crack and some magma shot up in there and cooled just like a gold vein. And so you have the rock on this side and the rock on this side is the same. You have this dike in the middle. I'll break some off we can take a look at kind of the composition. This is also cool I'll show you this more geology stuff see these striations right here these are glacial striations so as the ice drug its way down the valley it made these really cool striations all along the rock here you can see them really well really well defined this is probably a lot harder than the country rock this stuff here is real soft and weathers away, but this has held those glacial striations. And so from these, you can tell the direction of the flow of the ice. And this is kind of cool. I've never seen this where it comes over the top and it came around the side and it just kind of mushroomed this off here. So two different flow directions coming together. That's kind of neat. Here's a fresh break on that dike. And it's definitely on the felsic end. It's not extremely felsic, but Felsic means more quartz, and mafic means less quartz. Mafic is typically black or darker, and felsic is a lot lighter. Another interesting thing here is there is absolutely no weathering rind on this stuff. So this has been exposed to the elements not very long at all. Sometimes you'll see dikes or rocks that have weather rinds that are inches or feet into their surface. But this one, you break it open and right, I mean, right there, there's a little bit of discoloration, but there's pretty much no weather rind at all. There's the other half. A few darker crystals in there, but more on the felsic end. And it just runs right down into the creek. Well, there's our dike right there. I haven't come too far. And here's our first interesting piece. That's what Listwinite looks like. Oh, interesting, there's quartz in the back side. The greener, the better. I'm not too excited about this piece, but we're on the right track. We're coming down into the valley bottom here. That thing is running super milk chocolatey brown, almost gray, more gray than anything. So they're getting a bunch of warm rain, not too far up valley, melting a bunch of ice and snow, and it's coming down there, all the ground up rock from the glacial bowl up there somewhere is starting to come down this creek. I gotta get across there somehow, probably down a little ways. But I like that we're starting to see some of this Listwinite stuff. There's a piece right there. Looking across, I don't, there's some, yeah, there's, there's some pieces right over here by this big rock. But we're on the right track here. I wanna get over to that, that side right over there see what we can see. Wow. That looks fast. How am I going to get across there? 
Okay, here's my spot. Oh man, look at these. Beauty. There's one. I just jumped across the creek and now all of a sudden it's everywhere. There's some, there's some. We're in the right spot. Well, distance is really weird right in here. I don't know if that's like half a mile away or 200 yards away. It's really, really weird. There's no, there's no reference, it's just rock. But here's where we're going. It didn't take me hardly any time to get over here. I think we're about to find some really good gold here. I'm finding some really good pieces here. Look at that. Man, oh man. We're in the right spot. I'm going to start bagging some of these up to take back. I'm right here at the base of this big snow bank. And, but I don't see any green stuff. I followed the creek up maybe 100 150 yards from the last time I spotted it and there's a bunch of brown stuff but I don't see any green so I'm not gonna go up there I'm gonna go back over to the other side here over this little hump to the main creek and see if I can find some more green stuff I'm back in the main channel and I'm back into this green look at that piece oh man that's a beauty that guy's going in the bag. Oh yeah. That's good stuff there. Put him in the bag right now. But we gotta follow this float up. It's still fairly rounded. And so I'm a little worried it's way up there. But it had to come from up, so let's go up. Here's a beautiful example of glacial striations. Kind of see him in the shadow. There you go. That rock just sat there and ice just drug across there straight down the valley. This has not been ice free for very long. Oh, there's a beautiful one. Look at these striations. Holy cow. Just sat there and the ice just drug along the side. Man, look at that. Power of nature. Well, I broke back over into the kind of the main channel. And now I'm starting to find it everywhere. So this is the side you want to be on, but you can just walk along and that bright green jumps right out at you. There's a piece that's not too good. There's a nice piece. Whoa, look at that piece. Whoa, this is a good one here. Beauty of a piece there. The problem is I don't want to hike all these up. So I'm going to make little piles and get them on the way down, I think. Look at there, the first little tree that's growing on this otherwise rocky moraine. And so I gotta figure out which one of these little drainages has the most lispinite in it. And there's a few brown rocks down there, but not very many. But when you look over here, look at all the brown rocks in that creek. Brown rocks over there. So I'm gonna discount this stuff I'm going to go right up this creek here and see if I can find the source. But I'm just following the float. It gets a little tricky when you're in a glaciated valley because the glacier can just bulldoze stuff all over the place. But there's certainly a higher concentration down this middle channel. Yeah, this valley's just loaded with it. Brown everywhere. Well, I'm going up the creek just breaking open rocks. And this, I can't tell, and I don't have a loop with me, but that right there looks suspiciously good. When I slabbed it in my saw last time, that's what you were looking for, is that kind of yellowy, dusty looking stuff. That might all be gold right there. I can't tell, but that's what I'm definitely gonna put in my pack and get it slabbed up when we get back home. Good stuff. Man, look at the color of that. Really, really pretty. Beautiful stone, can't wait to cut it. You ever feel like the walls are closing in on you? 
Because that's how I feel. I keep going up and up and up and I just never feel like I'm getting anywhere. Down there is where I came from and up there is where I'm going. I'm starting to see some interesting stuff, intrusions in this phyllite, like that stuff up there. Well, here's the first outcrop I've seen with green on it. And I was kind of hoping to find a big zone or a band or a vein, but it, it might just be like little pods all throughout the country rock here. I've tried to come up and over a little bit, try and get around that canyon. But I might be looking for something that doesn't exist here in the fact that there's a bunch of little pods of it and not one big zone. But I'm going to keep going up and if I, if I can't find a big zone or I find these little outcrops, I'll see what I can do on those. But I think probably what's going to happen is I'll collect all my good specimens on the way down. When I, uh, when I hike back down, I'll just get the float and then we can saw them up. But I'd really like to find a, an area where there's a nice big outcrop of it. Well, here's a pretty good little pot of it. Right down here, it's just kind of, it's just kind of like a pod. There's, there's a boundary there, and it just kind of fades off into the country rock over there. It's got the green in it we like, but it's just not very big. Well, hang on here. Here's a pretty good outcrop of it. Nice green there, kind of jumbled up. Big chunk of it there, kind of all the way up that way. So we're starting to, we're, we're in the zone. We're in, we're in the right spot. I'm way the heck up here. This is the creek I was following up. I had to go around because it went into a little canyon area. But we'll get, see there's another nice little, right right over here, a nice little looking spot of it. Oh, heck, maybe that whole mountain right there is part of it. But we're definitely, we're in, we're in the good spot here. Huh, there's a glacier. I made it to the glacier. That's kind of cool. I find these all over the place when I'm out hiking way out in the backcountry. That's a balloon floated up here and popped and that's where it landed, right up here at the toe of this glacier. Man, I wish I could see what's up past that glacier because I think there's a nasty big old peak right up above us there, but it's cloudy today. Let's see if I can get around on this thing walking on ancient ice here and it's just melting away running right down into the creek and down into the ocean look at how silty fine silty glacial flowers coming off of that water but then you look down here and the ice is clear you can see way down in it well, this is interesting. I'm right up, right by this glacier here. There's a big outcrop of what looks like Listonite. It's not very green, but it's certainly kind of that metamorphosed Listonite looking stuff. But then here, all along the margin, is this nice green looking stuff. So I wonder if there's some sort of chemistry that right along the edges of the contacts you get some green mineralization happening. Just came over the hill where we're, we're kind of at this margin zone again and it's just really really green. Let me see if I can get my hammer and chisel out and knock some of that off of there because I think I think right here is the contact because then you've got this fillite over here 
and right along right along the contact you get this green popping out Whoa. <laughs> Look at all that green. Oh boy, let's get that washed off. Wow, that's beautiful stuff. I wonder if I can break this up, carry some of it down. It's mostly fill light. And there's the contact where it's super green. Weird. It's right along the contact, right where it hits the fillite. This is a big chunk of fillite with a little rind of this green on it. Well, look at some of these beauties. I've got some really, really good stuff here. Man, oh man. I cannot wait to get that slab. Look at the color on that. It's just amazing. And it's right there, right in the band, right in the fillite. And once you get up into whatever this is, maybe it's just more fillite, but it's kind of it's kind of right here. There might be a little slip here, a little seam. But it's just right along all the way along here. Ooh, look at that piece. Haven't been over here yet. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to work along this contact here a little bit, see what else I can find. Oh, this is fun. Well, I wanted to share a little bit of my limited understanding about kind of what Listronite is and how it forms. It's an ultramafic rock, so it originated as like serpentine. And what happens is, I believe this whole valley I'm walking up is this huge giant fault zone. The rock just looks tortured. Uh, there's all kinds of slick insides and all these surfaces. So I think there's just this big huge fault zone right here. And this outcrop behind me and it kind of wraps around and I've, I've scouted it out some. And there's just kind of this big blob of, of what I'm calling Lisplanite. And I think what happened was it was originally this lens of this ultramafic serpentine and it's got caught up in this fault zone, which is real common where it comes from deep in the earth, comes up to the surface. And then hydrothermal alteration happened where you had some mineral rich hot fluids come through and it altered this serpentine into listwinite. And that's why you have, even though it's an ultramafic rock, it's full of quartz and it's full of these minerals that you don't often associate with ultramafic rocks, but it still carries a lot of the nickel uh, I'm not sure if there's cobalt in there or not, but that's where that green blue comes from. And while I was walking around, I found a piece of kind of unaltered serpentine. You can see right in here, this dark, dark green stuff is serpentine. And so this is somewhere in this vault zone that didn't get hydrothermally altered. So this is the original host rock and this stuff behind me, this brown stuff, is that altered serpentine that ends up becoming a listonite. I've walked around the other side of the outcrop and here's a really good example of that serpentine ultramafic looking stuff. Here's some more of it. And I am i don't know if I'm gonna lie to you here, but I think there's a mineral called actinolite. And that, that might be what this is. I gotta, I gotta check myself, but a lot of times what this ends up being is it, it's, it turns into asbestos. And so this is probably a naturally occurring pocket of asbestos, but you can see those big, long, needly crystals on there. Nice example. And so it's interesting, on this side of the outcrop, you don't have the hydrothermal alteration that we do on the contact zone of the other side. And it's only about 50 feet over to the south there. All right, one last look at glacial striations, I promise. But this is just one of the most textbook examples. All those scratches on the surface of that rock is from that glacier right there when it was a lot thicker and bigger and it was just scraping over the top of this rock. 
causing all those glacial striations. Really, really good example. My bag's as heavy as I want to carry down, and I'm going to get a couple more samples on my way down that I stashed. Hey, look at here. Another balloon. Happy birthday to somebody or something. I, I guess I'll pack that out. Ugh, we don't need to leave that up here. So here's the tricky part about this. Is I gotta go down this real steep drainage. It's all loose as can be. So one little slip. And you might break a leg or an arm or whack your head. And then you got stuff like that. See that? There's ice hiding under some of this rock. So if I take the wrong step, I get whacked. So I gotta go down through that little slot there. See if I can make it. I'm walking down this really cool little finger moraine between these two creeks. And I just happened to stumble across this guy. I think that's a big piece of jade. I think it's a, a really high quality piece of jade. Holy moly, it's a monster. It's like 100 pounds, but it's just 100% solid jade, I think. Is that jade? I think that's jade. Leave me a comment, let me know. But it's been glaciated, nice smooth face, nice smooth bottom. It's actually probably what you call a faceted clast, where it's been drugged down underneath the ice and as it rolls over it scrapes one side smooth and turns it kind of square anyway oh gosh what do i do with it what's that worth i don't even know if i could pack it out of there i think it's like 100 pounds or more oh boy dan what do i do well reluctantly it gave up a little piece of itself i whacked on that for a long time with a hammer and chisel but I got a little piece. I'll take this down and cut it up too, see what it looks like. And then we can see if it's real jade. I could probably get that in my bag and pack down if that was all I could all I was carrying. Probably weighs about 60 or 80 pounds. Man, it's a beautiful piece. But we're on list one night today. I'm working my way down. My pack is probably 50 pounds. Probably got too many rocks in it. But hey, weird question for you guys. Uh, why is my right knee popping every time I take a step? Like on the outside of my right knee, it like snaps. Like there's a tendon whipping across something in there. Is that okay? Doesn't really hurt, but I'm not even 40 yet. And my knees are popping and my hips are sore. I'm gonna be sore tonight, let me tell you that. So to give you a little perspective, I walked up that moraine up there up the creek into the clouds and we were right on top of that guy right there right there is where that outcrop was so i've had to come all the way down and now i've got to go back up over a little knob and down to the truck but one more view at the scenery here this is such a beautiful place All right, everybody, this is the sketchiest part of the whole thing. It is, there's my foot dangling in the air, and it's just all I can do. I'm using both hands and both feet. I've gained an extra 50 or 60, so it makes it a lot harder going down, grabbing everything, sliding on my butt in places. And so it's, this is, this is the nasty part. I was all worried about breaking a leg up above, this one, if I get going, I'm just going. <laughs> There's nothing stopping me. So, just taking it slow, but man, all that extra weight is not helping me at all. Well, I made it out. That was the sketchiest thing I've ever done. Maybe. I'm embarrassed how many times I had to slide my butt, how many times I had to grab onto a tree, how many times I had to talk myself into just just do it. Just 
reach for that next branch. Just take that next step. I probably won't be going back up that way again. The bag obviously didn't help. If I didn't have a bag, it would be a lot easier coming down. But I'm not, I'm not 20 anymore, and I'm coming to terms with that. So, But I'm back. We'll get these things down to the rock shop, and we'll get them cut open and see what we have in them. Well, that was a crazy trip. I had a lot of fun. The first thing I want to do here is I want to weigh my bag. I want to figure out how much weight I was packing down the mountain. Can you guys see it there? It's about 60 pounds. I was packing 60 pounds of rock down the mountain. Hopefully there's some good stuff in here. I think it's time for a new backpack, huh? Here is our haul. I'm really excited about some of these bigger blue ones. I haven't seen anything this blue in Listwinite before, so I don't know if there's some copper in there as well. Copper typically gives that blue color. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut up some of these, slab up some of these. We'll use a little microscope today to take a look. Some of these bigger things we'll slab, we'll sell some slabs, we'll sell some stand-ups. So check out the eBay account for that if you're interested. But let's start right off the bat with a good looking one. That's a nice blue one. We'll chuck that up in the saw and get it slabbed up and see what we can find. We'll get some nice slabs off of this one. Okay, here we go. All right, this is always the exciting part. Oh man, that looks good. Yeah. So now we're gonna crank this in for five. And now that'll give us about a quarter inch slab. And people really like those for making cabochons out of. There's some beautiful, beautiful looking stuff there. Well, I've got several nice slabs off of this one. So now I'm gonna cut it across the grain and make two stand-ups out of it. Uh, let's have a look here. Ooh, pretty nice. That's cool. Let's try this one. Ooh, yeah. Good stuff. Here's the next one I want to try. This is that big one I knocked off the outcrop. So let's get him chucked up. I'm hoping there's a lot of blue in this and not a lot of fillite. I hope I didn't just pack a whole bunch of fillite down the hill. We'll start nicking off this little edge here. Take a look at the end grain and see what it looks like. But this, this area up here is where I really want to get into. Let's have a look at our first big blue here. That's pretty cool looking. And that blue is so vibrant. We'll move it over, we'll take like a, another one inch slab or something. Here's our next cutoff big blue here. That is pretty cool looking. Wild colors. Our first cross grain cut. Oh yeah. Here's a piece of it up close. Isn't that cool looking? I don't know if that's list tonight. I think that's something different. I'm not sure what we got here. Wow. It's almost like blue tiger stripes or something. For some of our smaller pieces, I'm gonna use this little tile saw. And if I was gonna get into it again and start over, I'd start with a little tile saw. They, this one was like a couple hundred bucks off Craigslist or something. Have a little bucket of water and you can put your pieces on this tray and just slide them in real slow right into the blade. The blade won't cut your fingers because it's diamond, it's, there's no teeth on it. And it's just real safe, real easy, real cheap. So cool. 
Well, I want to take a quick look at these under the microscope. That's one thing that's really nice about the tile saw is it uses water as a lubricant and coolant, so it's easy cleanup. This is a little microscope I've shown on some other videos. It just clips right onto my phone. It works really, really well. I'm really happy with it. If you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description below and you can check it out. And you can just clip it on and cruise around. Looks like there's some sulfides there, probably pyrotite. But the, the rock just looks wild under a microscope. Let me turn it over 90 degrees. I've gotten comments that it looks like the clouds of Jupiter or something. Really, really cool colors. I want to find some gold though. Let's take a look at this vibrant blue one under the microscope. Man, look at that color. It's kind of cool with those little brown inclusions in it. But it is just so blue. So here's the question. Is that a nickel or chrome color? Or is that copper? Is that blue copper colored? Leave me a comment below and let me know what you think on that. That's the coolest one yet, right there. Looks like tiger stripes. This is the one I'm very excited about. I'm going to slab it this way, right across the grain. The grain's going this way. And I'm hopefully going to get all kinds of cool, I don't know what to call it, blue tiger stripe, I guess. But I'm going to make a bunch of slabs. This might be the best one out of all of them. Okay, cross your fingers for some really nice blue tiger stripe. Not too bad looking. Take another couple slabs, see what it looks like. And every slab just keeps getting better. Look at that. Blue tiger stripe, I guess is what I'm calling that. Well, unfortunately, it looked like there was a crack kind of right down through the middle. It kept breaking there, but it's some beautiful, beautiful stuff. The blue and the orange together looks really, really cool. And there's the last piece right in the end. There's still a ton of good stuff on there. But the color is just blowing my mind. And I've got, I don't know, six or eight slabs there. Well, now let's play with this one. This is that piece of green rock that I found in the moraine. It might be jade, I'm not quite sure. Let's slab a couple slabs pretty thin, and we'll take a look. Well, we've got a thin little slab off of there. Let me go clean it up, and then we'll shine some light through it, see if we can see through it. Oh, I don't know, what do you think? There's definitely some areas that the light shines through. What do you think guys? Is that is that jade? How do I tell? Leave me a comment to to let me know how how do I definitively tell if this is jade or not. I'm not gonna spend a whole bunch more time 
cutting slabs off it, but I'll put it up on eBay for a buck if someone wants to buy it and play with it. You can find it on the eBay listings. Well, here's a last look at everything. I've got some rough over here, a couple of really cool pieces that have some nice blue on them. And then I cut a bunch of the listonite. I did not find hardly any gold. There was a few pieces that had a couple little specks in it, but nothing like that one piece I found in the previous video. There's some really interesting pieces in here. That stuff. There's one down here that I really like. That one's pretty cool. This one's this one's quite amazing. It it almost has like that tiger stripe blue on it and then listonite in the middle. So that one's pretty cool. And then here's some of that what I'm calling tiger stripe. I don't know what else to call it. If you guys have any idea what this is, let me know. But you've got the, the blue and the orange bands, and then the fill light is the black. And some of it is just phenomenal color. There's one back here I really like. This one's kind of like a cross between Listwinite and Tiger Stripe. Some quartz in there. That one's very cool. And then, of course, the little slabs I did right at the end there of the tiger stripe. This was the first one we cut. This was the big listonite that I cut into slabs. Those turned out really nice. And then here's a piece, kind of rough, I guess, with some blue in it still. Here's the, I don't know what to call it, green rock, I guess. Let's just call it a green rock. Whether it's jade or not, I'm not sure, but that'll go up on eBay. And then a couple of bonus things. I was gonna just put this whole pile on there as a lot. This is just miscellaneous stuff that I've cut and never did anything with. There's some dunite, some listonite, a bunch of quartz from the mine. So that'll go on eBay as a lot. And then let me show you one more thing here. I got a surprise for you. I've been working on cutting some stuff from the gold mine. So this stuff has turned out really, really nice. Big, thick slabs. I've got some stuff that are rough on the back. And the face comes out pretty nice. So this will be the first stuff from the gold mine going on eBay. Thanks everyone for watching. And if you're interested in any of the samples you saw here today, check out our eBay listings. I'll put a link in the description below. So thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.